Okay. Have you ever like been in a team and you have this different idea you want to throw out there, mm -hmm. but there's this kind of like unspoken pressure yes. to just go with the flow? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's something I think a lot of people can relate to. And it kind of leads perfectly into what we're diving into today. Okay. Cool. Which yeah. is, you know, peer pressure in agile teams right. and how that impacts their ability to innovate. Yeah. And and we're not just you know, speculating on this, we're basing this deep dive on our research paper um, yes. called uh, Mitigating the Dark Side of Agile Teams, Peer Pressure, Leaders Control, and the Innovative Output of Agile Teams. That's right. And they actually uh, surveyed quite a lot of people for this study. Yeah. Like 248 team members. Yeah. yeah, good samples. 126 internal team leaders and 97 organizational leaders. Wow. And this was across 97 self-managing software development teams. Okay at a Fortune 500 company. Wow, that's really interesting. So there's some serious data behind this. Um, and you know, our mission in this deep dive is to take those key findings yeah. from this research and understand how that peer pressure yeah. can actually like stifle innovation Yeah, I mean, in these agile teams. Yeah, the really interesting thing about this is, you know, a, a lot of the time when we talk about agile teams and you know, these self-managing teams, right. which are really central to you know, agile frameworks like Scrum. Right. The idea is that this autonomy and flexibility yes. that you give these teams mm -hmm. should you know, your... unlock. Empower them. Their creative potential. Yeah. And boost innovation. Yeah, totally. But what this research actually found mm -hmm. is that, you know, this autonomy, which is meant to be fueling agile innovation, can kind of backfire a little bit. Interesting. In that it can breed this peer pressure, which actually suppresses. So it's like a double-edged sword almost. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a bit of a paradox. Yeah. You know, and I think the other interesting thing that the research looks at is that managerial controls, mm. which a lot of the time we think of as like these top-down forces, yeah. which could stifle creativity, yeah. might actually be quite important in counteracting the negative effects of peer pressure. Interesting, so that's kind of like a push and pull there. It is, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. Very complex kind of dynamic. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting about the way that they look at this is that they look at it on multiple levels. Okay. So they're looking at this team level peer pressure, uh -huh. and then they're looking at the organizational level and these two types of managerial control systems. Right. Which they call interactive and diagnostic control. Okay. So let's um, you know, unpack a little bit what exactly this peer pressure at the team level looks like. Yeah, so the researchers define it as a system of control. Okay. Exerted by workers through like shared norms and, you know, verbal disapproval if somebody's, you know, breaking those norms. Right. And these kind of unspoken rules that regulate individual and collective actions. So it's almost like the team like develops this kind of like rule book. Exactly. But like how things should be done. Yeah. It's and everyone is like, you know, gently or not so gently encouraging each other to stick to it. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know, it emerges quite naturally, you know, right. from teams working together and collaborating. Right. And they kind of establish these norms of what is the right way yeah. to do things. And what's considered the correct behavior. Exactly. And yeah. of course, you know, in these self-managing teams where you don't have this you know, traditional hierarchy with a manager at the top. Right. What that means is that your individual autonomy to decide, you know, how you want to approach a task right. might be superseded by this pressure right. to align with the team's expectations. Yeah, because the locus of control shifts, right? Exactly. From the manager to the team itself. Yeah. And so then the social dynamics become so important. They do, yeah. In in shaping behavior. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, if you're someone who has a really unconventional idea mm -hmm. or you want to experiment with a different method, you yeah. might be a little bit hesitant to do that. Yeah. If you sense that there's this, you know, very strong kind of like expectation for how things should be done. That's right. Yeah. And you don't want to rock the boat. And I think it's important to note here, you know, when we talk about innovation in this study. Right. What they're looking at is this process of both generating mm -hmm. new and useful ideas right. and also the implementation of those ideas. So not just coming up with the ideas, but actually putting them into practice. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the time we think, okay, autonomy. Right. It's going to be really good for... Sparking those ideas, right? Coming up with those creative ideas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the first key finding in this research actually kind of challenges that assumption a little bit. Okay. So what did they find? So they actually confirmed that, you know, peer pressure is very common. Okay in established Agile teams. Okay. 
And the big thing here is they found that it has a negative oh, wow. influence yeah. on their innovative output. That's kind of surprising, though, because the whole point of these agile teams was to, like, Ex unleash innovation, right? Yeah, and they actually found that it's this peer pressure. Yeah. Which is kind of stifling it. So so why why is that happening? So they point to a couple of key mechanisms here. Okay. Firstly, they say that high peer pressure huh. can really undermine a person's intrinsic motivation. Right. So that's like your internal drive and passion mm -hmm. for doing something. Yeah. And, you know, when people feel this pressure to conform, it can lead to things like, you know, reduced engagement with the task at hand. Right. Less interest in the task. Right. You know, maybe a drop in their self-confidence. Yeah, you don't feel as confident to, like, put yourself out there and, I, like, take risks. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. I think, you know, particularly when we're talking about innovation, you need to be willing to take risks. Totally. And to push the boundaries. Yeah, and it's kind of like that fear of judgment, I guess, yeah. right? Like, you don't want to go against the grain. So you just kind of, like, play it safe. Yeah. And then your focus shifts from, like, the creative task to just, like, adhering to the norms. Exactly. And that kind of leads into their second point. Yeah. Which is that this pressure to s stick with the team's established way of doing things mm -hmm. can discourage the kind of divergent thinking and behavior right. that you need for innovation. Yeah, because innovation really requires that, like, breaking away from the norm. Exactly. Yeah, you need to be exploring. Be challenging assumptions. You need to be willing to challenge the status quo. Yeah, and, and this peer pressure kind of keeps everyone, like, in line. Yeah, it pulls everyone back to the familiar. Right, which is kind of like the opposite of what you want. It is, yeah. If you're trying to innovate. Yeah. It's interesting how that, like, social cohesion yeah. can actually... It almost be a barrier. Yeah. To generating new ideas. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so so the study also looked at how management... Tries to influence these self-managing teams uh -huh. through different types of control systems yes. and they looked at diagnostic control systems and interactive control. That's right. Yeah. So let's like break down those two. Yeah. Um, so what exactly are diagnostic control systems? So I think of diagnostic control systems as, you know, kind of the more traditional okay. managerial uh -huh. oversight tools. Okay. So it's very much about setting clear targets and goals. Okay. And then you're rigorously monitoring progress against those goals. Okay. You're using performance data. Right. You know, feedback loops uh -huh. to ensure the team is staying on track. So it's really about hitting the metrics yeah. and staying efficient. Yeah, very much so. Okay, so what did they find? About how that impacts innovation. Yeah. So their hypothesis was that managerial diagnostic control would actually be negatively related to innovative output. Okay, so that's not... That was supported. That's not super surprising given what we've already talked about. But... But how do these diagnostic controls actually, like, spifle innovation? So they said that while it can provide focus, you know, uh -huh. it can also act as what they called a non-synergistic extrinsic motivator. Okay, so what does that mean exactly? So what they mean by that is that it can undermine intrinsic motivation. Okay. Because the focus shifts to meeting externally imposed targets uh -huh. rather than you know, the inherent reward of solving problems and coming up with new ideas. So you're focused on pleasing the managers and hitting those numbers yeah. instead of the joy of creation. Exactly. Yeah. And they also said that, you know, it encourages what's yeah. known as single loop learning. Okay. Which is basically making adjustments within the existing framework mm -hmm. to reach a target. Okay. Rather than double loop learning, uh -huh. which is when you're actually questioning the underlying assumptions of the framework. So single loop learning is like, you know... Adjusting a thermostat to maintain a temperature, but yeah. double loop learning is like saying, okay, is this... Yeah, do we even need... The most efficient heating system mm -hmm. for this house. Exactly. Okay. And then they also mentioned that, you know, these types of control systems can limit information flow. Okay. Which is really important for new ideas right. to emerge and be shared. Okay, so let's move on to this. So that's diagnostic control. Other type of control. Yeah. Interactive control. Yeah. Which sounds like it's a bit more... Yeah. Human. It is. It, it's characterized by this active engagement. Okay. From managers in regular dialogue mm -hmm. and interactions with the team. So it's less about just like observing data. Yeah. And more about like being a part of the team's thinking. Yeah. So I'm guessing that they probably found that this leads to more innovation. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So they found that managerial interactive control uh -huh. is positively related okay. to innovative output. 
Okay, cool. And they said that this is because it encourages, mm -hmm. you know, this continuous learning and adaptation. So it's these regular face-to-face -face meetings, mm -hmm. this ongoing debate and discussion, okay, which actually equips teams mm -hmm. to formulate action plans and adapt to changing circumstances. So it's about creating that space for like open communication right. Right? and making sure that everybody understands. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And they said that it provides intellectual stimulation. Uh huh. It helps to kind of disseminate knowledge and different perspectives throughout the team. Right. And it can also help teams navigate the inevitable tensions that come up between, you know, I'm wanting not... to be innovative, but also, right. you know, having to maintain efficiency. Right. Because those two things yeah. can sometimes be intention. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we've kind of established that like peer pressure can be bad. Yeah. Diagnostic controls can be bad. Yeah. Interactive control is looking pretty good. Yeah. But then they took it a step further. They did. Yeah. And they said, okay, how do these managerial controls actually like influence that dynamic of peer pressure. That's right. Yeah, this is where it gets really interesting. Okay, so let's start with diagnostic control. Okay. How does that fit into the peer pressure puzzle? So their hypothesis here was that diagnostic control would actually weaken the negative impact of team peer pressure on innovative output. So the same diagnostic control. And that was supported. That we said can stifle innovation. Yes. Can actually be good. Can actually be beneficial. Yeah. When there's peer pressure. Yeah, it's a bit of a paradox. It's so weird. Yeah. But I think the logic here is that when peer pressure is very high, you know, it can mean that teams are very focused on the mm -hmm. internal norms. Right. And they might be quite resistant to new ideas. Right. That kind of deviate from those norms. Mm -hmm. And in those sorts of situations where you've got this very high peer pressure, uh -huh. Diagnostic controls can actually be useful. Okay. Because it forces the team to kind of step back and think, okay, are we, uh -huh. you know, are we actually. Is this actually serving us? Suppressing, you know, the right. contributions of really creative individuals. Right. Or, or is it. Just we're so worried about. Hindering us or, from. You know, not rocking the boat. Reaching our goals. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So it's like. So it provides this kind of external benchmark. Right. Almost to kind of redirect the team's focus. Okay to those tangible outputs. Yeah, like redirect their focus away from just like yeah. the internal social harmony. Exactly. Oh, okay, that's interesting. That's, yeah. So it's like in that context, it can be helpful. Yeah. Even though in other context. on its own, it can yeah, be it stifling. Stifle innovation, yeah. Okay, and then what about interactive control? Yeah, so they also found that interactive control mm -hmm. weakens the negative effects okay. of peer pressure on innovation. So that one's not quite as surprising. Yeah. And I think the idea here is that you've got the manager who's actively engaging with the team and they can actually, you know, challenge some of those deep seated team norms. Right. That might be preventing innovation from happening. So the manager becomes kind of like yeah. a catalyst for thinking outside the box. Exactly. Yeah. And a counterweight to that pressure to conform. Yeah. I think, you know, by enc encouraging different viewpoints right. and facilitating this really open exchange of ideas, uh -huh. they can help people feel more confident in, you know, right. challenging the status quo. Yeah. And it can also kind of like... And pushing beyond the team's existing way of operating. Emphasize the importance of innovation for the whole organization. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. It's interesting how those two types of management control can actually... Yeah both be helpful in that yeah in that situation of high peer pressure yeah but they they kind of approach it yeah in different ways in completely different ways yeah yeah and and there was another interesting finding about interactive control which was that its positive effect on innovation was strongest when peer pressure was already low oh that's interesting so that kind of suggests that like if there's already a lot of peer pressure you can actually negate it's almost like you're trying to fight yeah. against the tide yeah. to introduce these new ideas exactly when the pressure is just so high yeah and and i think really? that really underscores the importance mm -hmm. of addressing those levels of peer pressure right within a team before you even try and do any of this other stuff exactly yes. okay so the study was conducted in the context of agile software development yeah that's right and specifically scrum yeah and obviously self-organizing teams are like a core yeah that's right tenet of that yeah um so obviously that's really important to keep in mind yeah. when we're thinking about these findings and they did i guess it acknowledged some limitations yeah of their research 
Yeah, and and one of the things they talked about was you know they use cross sectional data. Yeah, which means it's kind of like a snapshot. Yeah. In time. Yeah, it's hard to say for certain. You uh-huh. know what's causing what. Yeah, you can see correlations. Exactly. But you can't definitively say. Yeah. That you know this causes that exactly yeah and also the data was collected from a single large company right you know a telecommunications company uh-huh. and so it's you know it'd be interesting to see right if this oh, these findings hold up generalizable across different industries oh, yeah, different types different. of organizations yeah. with different cultures and norms yeah so yeah i think that's so, so it's kind of like a starting point yeah right for their research yeah okay so let's kind of like sum this up yeah for everyone that's... who's listening to this deep dive yeah so i think the main takeaway here is that while mm-hmm. agile teams and self-management you know are often seen as good for innovation are often seen as you know, a way to mm-hmm. boost innovation. Yeah. This peer pressure yeah. that develops within them yeah. can actually be a real barrier yeah. to their ability to generate de- innovative outputs. Yeah. But it's not all doom and gloom well, because mm-hmm. there are things that managers can do right. to kind of to intervene strategically. Navigate these yeah. complex dynamics. Okay, so what are some of the practical implications of this? Okay, so if you're for those of us who are listening, yeah, if you're a member of a self-managing team, uh-huh. I think it's really important to be aware of, you know, uh-huh. how this peer pressure might be subtly influencing you, right? And you know, your willingness to maybe speak up, yeah. against the norms, yeah, to share a new idea, yeah. So it's just being aware of that dynamic, right? So like notice it, yeah. when it's happening, and don't hesitate to speak up, yeah. You know, even if it feels a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, and what about for those of us who are managers? Yeah, so for managers, I think the key message is that while autonomy is really important, Mm -hmm. it's not just about taking a completely hands-off approach. Right. You know, you need to be... You can't just assume everything's going to work out. Exactly. You need to be mindful of this peer pressure. Yeah. And they suggest that, you know, if the peer pressure is really high, Mm -hmm. you could actually implement these diagnostic controls. Right. Which can be quite helpful and kind of... Right. So like in that context... Refocusing the team. They could actually be helpful. Yeah. Even though on their own... Yeah. They can be bad. On their own, they can stifle innovation. But, right. But they can also be helpful. But then that kind of... In certain situations. Leads into yeah. this idea of the interactive control. Exactly. And I think... Which you want to use. To really foster a culture of innovation, particularly when that peer pressure is low. You know, managers need to be actively engaging with their teams. Right. Encouraging this open communication and debate. Right. Challenging assumptions. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, bringing in. Bringing in outside perspectives. Different viewpoints from outside the team as well. Right. So it's like finding that balance. Yeah. It's a real balancing act. Between giving the team the autonomy to do their thing. Yeah. But also. Providing that guidance. Stepping in at the right time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And. You know, it really highlights the importance uh-huh. uh, of, you know, these human dynamics right. within these teams. It's not just about, like, adopting the right framework. Exactly. It's about the people. Yeah. And how they're interacting with each other. And understanding, you know, these different and often competing forces right. within those teams. Yeah. So as we see more and more organizations kind of, like, adopting these agile methodologies, wow. how can we make sure yeah. that we're designing teams in a way and management practices in a way that yeah. actually promotes high performance yeah. but also psychological safety? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, you want to have that space where people can... You don't want people to be afraid... Print out ideas. To put their ideas forward. Without feeling like... They're going to be yeah, judged. Exactly. Right. And I think that's a really so bit, um, important point to reflect on. constant balancing act. It is. Right. And there's no kind of yeah. easy answer. So it's not a one size fits all. It's not. Yeah. Ah, cool. Well, this has been a really interesting yeah. deep dive. I think so. I think we've all learned a lot. I hope so. About this topic. Me too. And as always, you know. Keep thinking about these questions yep. because there's no easy answer. There isn't, no. <laughs> um, but it's definitely worth... But it's worth thinking about. Thinking about and like reflecting on your own teams and how you operate. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, we'll see you next time. See you next time.